1988, Vancouver had a lesbian film festival. I was 27 years old, one of the organizers. When I look back at that festival now, all I can think about is the photograph from the festival that's missing. The photograph of me at the top of a stepladder, poised to change the sign at the movie theater. In 1988, I was a young lesbian obsessed with politics and sexual imagery. I joined a lesbian art collective, Kiss and Tell. Me, as Lizzie Jones, and Persimmon Blackbridge, and Susan Stewart leaped into the fray that was known as the Porn Wars. Susan took a hundred photos of Persimmon and me having sex, or, more correctly, pretending to have sex, and women wrote on the walls around the images. It was about censorship, but like life, it ended up being about a lot more. Kiss and Tell also produced video, performance, and books. In our true inversion of performance, I told my first sex story, which had come to me unbidden in a dream. It's pretty goofy. I think the goofiness works like a safety valve. My story is all about a shy and nervous gal with a monster crush. She doesn't know how to come on to anybody. She's overwhelmed by lust. She makes a fool of herself, but she gets what she wants. You can laugh at her or with her. You can laugh because you've been there or because you're anxious that Persimmon's character just slapped her girlfriend or because you're turned on by what Susan is saying. You can laugh, and it's a release. That's me on the swing, like climbing a ladder, a trick I no longer perform. Rusty told the doctor in a flippant way, that she peed her pants and waited for the boring explanation. But Rusty's doctor asked her a million questions. She put things together that had nothing to do with each other, that happened months apart. Rusty tripping, Rusty sleeping, Rusty seeing double. Then she called a neurologist, and Rusty was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. You may be relieved, it said in a pamphlet. Rusty was relieved. Unlike her friends, she put a name to her weirdnesses. after that lesbian film festival, five years after diagnosis, I made art with my girlfriend for Out on Screen, a video of queers eating fruit with an interactive component and swell paintings. Life goes on. After diagnosis, I entered another art practice, the practice of disability arts, the practice of making the crip visible. Our bodies are visible, but ourselves are not. There's significant similarity between queer theory and disability theory. Carrie Sandal says it's our radical stance towards concepts of normalcy. Queers and people with disabilities are not normal. At least we hope we're not. We are usually not like our parents. We're different. We are making our own communities. We make our own communities with our own art. We understand that you can't make a silk purse from a sow's ear, but we like the sow's ear. I invented Rusty. She's a political queer, a political queer crip. Rusty, Rusty knows a million nurturers, it turns out. Everyone has an idea about what she should be doing to make herself better. Why does it bug her when they pass on the names of the Tai Chi centers, naturopaths, and home healers? No one's harassing her. Everyone quit cares. She's glad to have the support. This is a lie. It bugs her a lot sometimes. In 2006, Bonnie Cher Klein made the film Shameless, profiling five disability artists. Three of the people in the film are queer. Catherine Frizee, Jeff McMurchy, and Persimmon Blackbridge. Catherine Frizee is a writer who is famous in the disability world. She should be famous in the queer world. 
She should be famous in the world, period. She says, the stories of our lives are a wellspring of truth and power. I have a job organizing a disability arts festival. It used to be Jeff McMurchie's job. This is his art, constructed from found wood. I joke that every time I introduce myself to someone, they ask whether I'm the new Jeff. I might be a lesser Jeff. Jeff McMurchie is a visual artist and a dancer. He is famous in the disability world as an organizer of disability arts. Though he should be famous as an artist too. Now that I'm the new Jeff, for this festival, he gets to be an artist. My start in the art world came when I pretended to have sex many times with Persimmon Blackbridge. We explored sex art together. We learned about performance together. We learned about writing together. These are her sculptures. It's appropriate that Persimmon continues to influence my work in disability art. Her disability sculpture is a powerful touchstone for many disability artists, including me. I joined the disability-led revolt against normalization. I'm thrilled to have Persimmon's work to turn to. And here I am, organizing a festival, and Persimmon has provided the perfect poster image. Crip art, still queer, and this time, no ladders, no swings. 